Hello, hello. Hi, hi everybody. Hola, hola. Buenas, buenas, disculpas, disculpas. Como ayer les había quitado tres minutos y dije, les voy a dar un poquito más de tiempo para que, para que no me vayan a reclamar. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, good evening. Hi, hi. Good evening, good evening, hello. class. Hi, good evening. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Today, uh, it was a little tighter, but I think I am good. Okay, all right, all right. I'll accept that. We will accept that. How did you guys do with the rain? Are you guys happy that it's gone? Yes, teacher. <laughs> All right, all right. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> all right. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Friday. Who can tell me why today is our Friday? Why is today our Friday? The last day that we will have class. That is correct. But, but, but this week, right? Not this month, this week. Yes. We have classes Monday through Thursday, and we have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that we're going to be off, and then we come back in on Monday, and then we start it all over again. Four days. That's nice, right? Four days is nice. Someday I'm going to have my own company, and I'm going to make everybody work only four days, and I'm going to pay them like they work seven days. ¿Qué tal eso? What do you guys think about my idea? Good idea, bad idea, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's a great idea, but maybe at the end you will be thinking again if this is the, the right way to work in your company because maybe the people that will work with you, they will be happy, but you? I want to be completely happy that you guys are happy. Ah, but como no soy jefe. Fire me. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. That's what I was thinking. All right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys for coming in. Today, I wanted to continue a little bit, and I also have a few exercises for you that I wanted to try out, and you tell me what you guys think about them. Uh, maybe we can keep on doing them if you guys like them. And if not, we can change them up a little bit, right? Um, so let me go ahead and start sharing. First things first. Where are we on our platform? Did Have you guys completed section one altogether? Or is there somebody, somebody that's still missing to complete some? from the sections. Is everybody still good? Did, every, did everybody at least get on section one? By my side? Yeah, I did it. You did it? Okay, okay. And how many of you guys have gone to section two? Showing your hands or putting up a little sign? Section two, ¿quiénes ya llegaron a la sección número dos? Oh, Iris Palacio, ya voy en la sección dos. Ya va, okay, good, well done, well done, well done. Anybody that has gotten a little bit further than section two, how about section three? Anybody? Any, anybody? No, not yet. Section four, section five. No, okay, lo dejamos ahí. Okay, all right. So we left it, we, we started section one. And how are we doing? How are we comparing? 
um, how am I doing versus the work environment, our website versus the classes that we are receiving virtually. The platform versus the class. How are we and where are we supposed to go? Well, as you guys can see, there is five sections. Section number five is a little bit shorter, right? It only has eight lessons, really, really short. However, it has the final exam, right? Section four is not that short, but it also is not the longest, right? I would say that it's, it's all right. Section three is a little bit shorter because it also, well, no, it's actually one of the longest, 312 plus the midterm. And then we have section one that has 13 lessons and section two that has 10. So where are we supposed to be? As a class, we're supposed to be finishing section one and continuing to section two. More or less around 2.4, 2.5, maybe 2.6. If we are advanced in the classroom, we would be in 2.6 if we were going really, really fast. But because we are taking our time, we are going at a steady step, we are actually finishing section one and we're about to enter section two. And today, we should end up within 2.4 and 2.6 if we are able to finish it. And that means the next week, which is week number two for class and training, we are gonna complete section two and we're gonna go into section three. Weeks number three and four, we're gonna focus on the second portion of section three, section four, and then we're gonna finish it off with section five. So, vamos muy, muy bien. Alguna pregunta que ustedes tengan? Compañeros, compañeros. No, teacher. Todo bien. All right, so one little heads up. You see how you guys, there's a course end date and it says one month. Be careful with that because it is not one month long. It's a little bit less. The course actually ends between the 10 and the 12. And so to play it safe, I'm going to ask you guys to try to finish everything by December 10th. And that way you guys won't have any problems with the platform not being complete. Okay, can we all agree on that? December 10th? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Very good. Thank you guys very much. Let me go ahead and write it down here just to make sure. Now, I'm not, I, you know what? I, I wasn't paying attention when they actually said the date. I'm gonna put it here, December 10th, just as an FYI, but in spoken date, I think it might go all the way up to the 12th. Pero le voy a confirmar para el día de lunes. El lunes le voy a avisar si vamos hasta el 12 o si nos quedamos en el 10. All right. Okay. Okay, everybody. That's the platform. That is our little update. And now we move into a quick little review of what we saw yesterday. Who remembers what we saw yesterday? What was the last thing we saw? You guys remember? Who can remember what we covered? Really easy words. Model bears. Yeah, yeah, the models, right? And so for this, we were able to look at a list of the models. And the models were, repeat after me with your mic off, you don't have to turn it on, repeat after me. Can, could, 
may, might, may. should, ought may. to, uh, to, must, have uh, to, uh, will, shall, shall, and would. And if we are in a classroom or one day we go into a classroom and you guys ask me, teacher, can I use the bathroom? What am I going to tell you? May. 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 There we go, May. right? <laughs> right. I'm going to tell you, I don't know. Can you? Right? Can you physically go to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Right? I'm, I'm going to get all smart about it. Because what we should be using is may. Ahora, si tú quieres que yo te preste mi carro, ¿qué me puedes decir? ¿O cómo me lo vas a pedir? Could you let me your car? You could say, well, in this particular case, it would have to be can. Can I use your car? Now, if you want to use the word could, the thing is that you would have to format the sentence to make it fit. How can you change that to make it fit? You, wanna, you want me to let you borrow my car and you want to use the word could. What would you need to include? Could you please lend me your car? And I could possibly say, yeah, you know what, I could. And then you would be able to say. So now, remember, you, could, you can use could. It's not the best option, but you, you can use it. The only thing is that you have to format your sentence in a, in a longer way. And you have to throw in please in there to make it sound more appealing. Could you please let me use your car tonight for my date? Teacher. Yes, yes, ma'am. So it is a um, formal way to express it? You can, well, lo que pasa con could es que le estás poniendo un, po, un poquito más, es más como una pregunta y estás tirando la posibilidad. Pero se necesita, se necesitan un poquito más de palabras para poder ocuparla bien. Por eso te digo, se puede ocupar. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's the informal way. Yo diría que para ocupar could sería el formato más largo de hacerlo. Porque si tú te fijas, if we use the word can, it can be very short. Hey, um, oye, Gretel, can I use your car? ¿Qué me dirías tú, Gretel? Mm, no, no el, el carro y la pistola no se presta. ¿Cómo? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys see how it's a little bit, so, so there's two things that you want to, that you want to take into consideration cuando tú quieras ocupar la palabra can or could. Could, tú ya estás como diciendo, Ah, ¿cómo te diría esto? It, it's like you being like a negative possibility. O sea, como que tú estás teniendo esa second thought, como que tal vez no te lo quiere prestar. Es, es como, una inseguridad. Como, o algo correcto, es, es una posibilidad con inseguridad. Right, right. Insecure. It's like an insecure way of asking for something. Ahora, cuando vos le decís a alguien, can I use your car? Eso se escucha bien. Bien, bien seguro. Bien, bien confiado. Bien confiado, correcto. Entonces quiere decir que tú vas a ocupar la palabra can 
con alguien con la cual tú tienes un poquito más de confianza. Eh, so, okay. Yo creo que no, se, no, no sería así como formal o informal, sino que hay que ocupar como confianzudo. Entre más confianzudo sos, le puedes decir a alguien, hey, can I use your car? Te conozco desde, desde hace 10 años, ¿verdad? Can I use your car? Y la persona te va a decir, yeah, yeah, here's the keys. ¿verdad? O te dice que no. Now, if you don't know them that well, ahí es donde vos le puedes tirar el could. Hey, could you please let me your car for tonight? Y ellos te van a decir, I don't know you. ¿verdad? No, no te lo voy a prestar. <laughs> Entonces, so you can look at it that way. Pero sí se puede ocupar, solo que tenés que formatearlo más largo. O sea, la sentence tiene que ser un poco más larga. Tenés que explicar más cositas. Ok. Con eso y los models. Remember. What is it that you want to say? How is it that you want to sound? Right? When should I use what? Always keep in mind. Try... Try to say it in your head before you actually say it with your mouth. And think to yourself, does it sound good? Does it make sense? Does it have logic? And if the answer, if the answer that you get is a maybe, you might have to reuse the word. So think about what type of word you're using. Ahora, con eso... ¿Verdad? Creo que estábamos haciendo el Models Review y había un Knowledge Review for 1.11 que teníamos, que es el Knowledge Check 1.11. How many of you guys had, had any type of issues with Knowledge Check 1.11? Algún problema que hayan tenido y puede ser cualquiera. Y no lo había terminado yo. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to need your help to fill this in. Te dice, how do you feel about these situations? Write your own responses based on the vocabulary that it's given. So this is what you can use, right? You either love it. I love it. I can't stand it, it makes me happy, it bothers me, I don't like it, it embarrasses me, it doesn't bother me, it really upsets me, I don't mind it. These are the examples of the stuff that we can use. Había hecho dos. So the first option was, or the first question, when someone gives me a compliment on my clothes, oh my goodness, I love it. I love it when someone gives me a compliment on my clothes. Did everybody get this one right? Para los que lo hicieron, claro. Yeah? Yes? All right. The second one, when people are direct and say what's on their mind. Oh, my goodness. I love it when people are direct and say what's on their mind. Boom. When people call me late at night. ¿Y esto? Who finished it and what is the answer that we put? ¿Quién lo logró completar? ¿Quién se recuerda? A mí no me aparece eso. ¿No les aparece? 1.11. No, no, no es ese ejercicio. Estoy en el que no es. A ver, permítame entonces. Uh, perve, hold it, hold it. Están seguros, 100%. Yeah. Yo me metí a mal. I'm sorry. Y yo aquí, ay, miren, yo no lo he terminado. Bueno, no lo había terminado de todos modos. All right, let me see. Section. You know, you guys could have told me like a really long time ago. <laughs> You guys waited till I actually started working on it. So it's not, yeah, it is reading exercise. 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. The neighbor, the neighbor. No, but this one I did finish. Yes. How did you guys do on this one? Were you guys able to complete it and get 100 on the acknowledgement? Yeah. Or you guys haven't done it yet? <clears throat> I did. You did? Okay. All right. So, so what it asks you to do is you read the story and then there are there are specific words like for example resentment resentimiento in spanish right resentment resentimiento and so resentment and then they tell you that you have to match the word with the meaning so what does resentment mean well resentment is anger that grows over time you give a click and you submit it and there it is deliberately deliberadamente para nosotros deliberadamente right deliberately un poquito más larga en español deliberadamente deliberately esto significa on purpose on purpose you did it on purpose all right le das chequecito ah esta me gusta I rate. Irritado. Ay, es que el niño está irritado. No, no es el mismo, no es lo mismo. <laughs> Ojo con eso. I rate. I rate is used for, for example, in customer service, a customer can be irate. ¿Qué significa eso? He is bothered or annoyed. Algo lo molestó. He is irate. ¿Estamos bien hasta aquí? Yes. Measure. 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 I know you guys see an A there and you want to say it. But when you guys are pronouncing the word, it actually disappears a little bit. Measure. It doesn't sound out that much. Measure. So, in this particular case, to measure is to take steps in order to achieve something. I took some measures. Yo tomé medidas. ¿Cómo sería? Pre how do you say precautionary? Like, to avoid something from happening. Like precaution. Precaución, medidas de precaución. Sí, verdad. Yo tomé medidas de precaución. I took precautionary measures. Steps taken in order to achieve something. Y número cinco, manner. Manner, a way of behaving. Y terminamos con resolve. I need to resolve a problem. You need to end a problem or end a difficulty. Or a difficult situation. Y así es como queda. All right. So that is 111. Uh, gracias, clase, por hacerme trabajar doble. Esta me la van a pagar algún día. All right. Ahora, I have another reading exercise for you guys. How many of you guys like to read a lot? Ooh, teacher, a mí me gusta leer mucho, mucho, me gusta leer mucho. No, no, no. <laughs> Más o menos. Más, ¿Cómo es? Maso. Más o menos. All right, I'm going to ask you guys, I'm going to give you five minutes to read this. And then, as a group, we're going to answer a series of questions about this story. 
This is reading comprehension for intermediates. Así es que por eso es que está un poquito larga, ¿verdad? A ver, cinco minutos. Y los cinco minutos comienzan ya. Vamos a leer. Uh -huh. Five minutes. Five minutes, everybody. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo van? Do you guys need a little bit more time? Well, we, we did say five minutes, but... I finished. You guys, I finished. Anybody still going? Or can we go into the questions already? We can go to the questions. Let's go okay. to the questions. I like that. Did you guys like the story? Yes. Yeah. Yes, a little bit. Yes. It was all right, right? It was all right, it was all right. <laughs> all right, the rooster and the fox. A ver, mm, a ver, ahí van las preguntas. Let's see, it's a little bit, oh, why is it look so tiny? Hold on, let me fix this here. Let me see how I can fix it. Okay, ready? Oh, it's a little bit better, right? All right, all right, so, here we go, question number one. The rooster was way up in a tree. A, crowing softly. B, sleeping. Or C, crowing loudly. Letter C. Letter C. A ver, a ver. Oh, all right, all right, I like that. The fox ran to the rooster to get a little advice, a good laugh, or a chicken dinner? There's C. C. Was that C? Chicken dinner. A chicken, chicken dinner? dinner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, nice, nice, okay. To, the... yes. to get a chicken dinner. The plan the fox set up was 
it was nicer to be on the ground. There was a universal peace agreement between all animals or he had come to help the rooster get out of the tree. Letter B. B. Letter B. Nice. There was an agreement. All right. The universal peace agreement means no animals will have guns. People will love each other. No animals will eat each other. Letter C. Letter C. Yeah. Letter C. Letter C. All right. All right. Okay. The fox wanted the rooster to come down and talk so he could eat him, crow up in the tree some more, or say something clever. Letter A. Letter A. Oh, come down and talk. Oh, that was it. All right. The rooster told the fox he saw some more chickens, a pack of dogs on a fox hunt, or another fox? A pack of dogs. A pack of letter dogs, letter B, they say. B. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The rooster was clever, stupid, a good <laughs> singer. Letter A. A, all right. <laughs> All right, and eight. Certain offers of friendship mean a person suddenly being nice to you when they have been mean before, a person does something mean after being nice to you, or people often giving you things. A sudden offer of friendship. Letter B. Letter B. Todo este tiempo ha sido un bully en la clase conmigo. Y de repente llego y ahora quiero ser tu amigo. A sudden offers of friendship means think about it, think about it. Tengo B as an answer so far. Does everybody agree a. that it is B? Letter A. A, A. a? a ver, tengo a couple of A's. A. Well, I have a couple of A's and only one B, so let's go with A. A ver, ¿qué pasa? Oh, yeah. All right. So, you guys got it. All right. Good. Good for you. This is our daily reading comprehension exercise. Everywhere you go that requires English will tell you to read something and then explain to you or, or ask you to explain what you just read. Eso se llama... English reading comprehension. All right. So let's start it off. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today, what are we looking at? Section two. We have infinites and gerunds. We have some syllable pronunciation. I think we might be able to get there. Hopefully we can. All right. Let's start it off with infinites and gerunds. So what is an infinitive? Well, an infinitive is a basic form of a verb. And it usually starts with two. It starts with the word two. Some examples. To be, to be on time is important in U.S. culture. We try to arrive on time every day. Could you ask them to prepare something for the meeting? If you guys hear a word 
that starts off with to be, then that person is using an infinitive. Infinitive. To be, to arrive, to prepare are some of the examples. Everybody okay so far? Alguna pregunta que tengan? No, it's okay. All right, excellent. El famoso Geruns. Bueno, no, ni tan, ni tan famoso, ¿verdad? Este se pronuncia Jaren. But in Spanish, you guys can say Gerundio. I think they say Gerundio. Some people say Geruns, even though, you know, it might not be quite on. But if you hear somebody say gerund, oh, then he, he knows he knows about pronunciation, right? So what is a gerund? Well, a gerund is simple. It is the ing form of a verb used as a subject or an object in a sentence. Si tú lo estás ocupando como subject or object, entonces ese verbo con el ing se reconoce como un gerund. ¿Estamos bien hasta acá? Everybody okay? Okay. Okay. So, a gerund, like running, is my favorite form of exercise, or we like running. These are two examples. One of them is used as a subject and the other one is used as an object. Ahora, hay otra pequeña, otro formato que esto lo vimos, yo creo que you guys must have seen it maybe a long time ago on basic module one where Te están diciendo cómo formular una sentence with, with the verb be. I am at work. And then throughout the exercise, you have to convert that word, the, the, la palabra work, into a form of tense using the verb work plus ing. I am working today. Ahora, en este caso específico, it is not considered a gerund. En este caso de esta sentence, it is only considered the verb plus the ing. El famoso verbing que le dicen o el tense. Porque what you're doing is you're letting somebody know that you are doing something at this particular moment. Ocupando a specific tense. However, what we are doing now is a little bit different because we are actually using the form gerund. But in order to do it, it either has to be the subject or it has to be the object. Now, there is the form of we are running. The sentence is correct, but because there is an R, it becomes a verb. So it is not considered a gerund because of that, as you guys can see here. Because of that, it is not a gerund. Okay, so far, how are we doing? Para que califique como un infinitive, ¿qué necesita tener? ¿Qué es lo que usualmente va a tener en la palabra o antes de la palabra? True. To. It needs the word to. Mm. To be, to arrive, mm. to prepare. Mm. If you guys hear those words, 
it is an infinitive. ¿Qué necesitas tener en una sentence para que se califique la palabra running como un gerund? ¿Qué necesitas hacer en esa sentence? ING. Running la ING y necesita ser either the subject or the object. Ahora, hay un formato agregado que se llama el formato de la preposition. And I think we're going to see this one a little bit, a little bit ahead, but it, it's another form. This is pretty much the general idea de un infinitive y un gerund. Everybody okay so far? Everybody good? Yes. All right, yes. excellent. Pasamos. To give you guys a little bit more about infinitives, estamos aquí. And so, we have the verb plus the infinitive and it gives you it gives you a list right you have the verb and you can use an infinitive or a gerund in case of these words for example to agree to agree or to know, to agree, to know, to aim, to afford, to manage. ¿Qué es lo que estamos haciendo con las palabras? ¿Qué es lo que estamos agregando? Infinity. To. 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 Correcto. We're adding an infinitive, que en este caso es la palabra to. To afford. Y este verbo se acaba de convertir en un infinitive. Infinity. Yeah, baby, yeah. So now, how do you use them? As you guys can see, depending on how you want to place them in a sentence. If you want to use them to indicate the purpose of the action, he bought some flowers to give to his wife. Aquí está, to give to his wife. I will lock the door to prevent Theft to prevent. You can use them as subject of the sentence. To wait seemed foolish when decisive action was required. To swim in that sea may be dangerous. You can use it as a direct object of the sentence. I like to write in English. Everybody or everyone wanted to go. Estos son los diferentes formatos en los cuales ustedes pueden ocupar the infinitive. La siguiente porción is the verb plus the infinitive or a gerund. Attempting. Beginning. Seizing. Continuing. Forgetting. You take the verb and depending on what you want to say, you can either turn it into an infinitive to attempt, or you can turn it into a gerund by adding the ing. To attempt or attempting. To begin or at the beginning. And these are some of the examples of the words, but there's a lot, right? You can pretty much do it on, on every word. Everybody okay so far? Teacher, what is attempt? Attempt is eh, probar una vez. Eh, por mm. ejemplo, si tú te quisiste... Ejemplo, ¿verdad? Ejemplo, ejemplo. Eh, ponerle que tú quisiste brin, saltar eh, un, un murito, el muro. Bueno, trataste la primera vez y fallaste. Ese sería tu primer intento, right? Your first attempt, primer intento. Yes. Y luego lo volviste a hacer, ya sería tu segundo, y en tu segundo lo lograste. So, how many attempts did you try? Two attempts. 
yeah, two times. Two attempts. Entonces, attempt es intento. And I can use, uh, like, try. Try to attempt. Sí, you can. Mm -hmm. O le puedes poner el ing, attempting. También se puede. Mm -hmm. You can use okay. attempting. Okay. All right. Thanks. No problem, no problem. All right, so. What is a gerund? A gerund is a noun made from a verb by adding ing. That's all it is. It was a noun. But then we added ing, right? Perdón, it was a verb and we made it into a noun. Sorry about that. If you're going to use it as the subject, right, it goes at the beginning. Running is good for your heart. If you're going to use it as a direct object, he hates waking up early. If you're going to use it as a subject complement, what I dislike most is repeating myself. You can use it as an object complement. I saw Tom riding his bike. Object of a preposition. I am interested in improving myself. And an object of a possessive. She does not like your bossing her around. These are the different ways that you can use it. Y si ustedes se fijan a dónde va, ¿verdad? Usualmente va en medio, un poquito más allá de en medio, pero usualmente se mantiene por ahí. Y literalmente lo único que tú estás haciendo es, estás tomando un verbo y le estás agregando la ing and that verb work turned into working. The verb play just turned into playing. The verb study just turned into studying, working, playing, study. And that is a gerund, ladies and gentlemen. Todo bien hasta aquí? Yes. Excelente escuchar eso, excelente escuchar eso. Okay, so now here's a, here's a little bit of a shocker, right? Unlike a normal noun, a gerund can be modified by an adverb and take an object. Oh, my goodness. So, este es un ejemplo de una regla que se modifica cuando se implementa otra regla. Ah, 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 ¿qué les dije? ¿Qué les dije? Todo confuso. Right? Tenemos la palabra carefully, que es una adverb. Y luego tenemos painting, que es el gerund. Carefully painting. Y ahora, we have the direct object, which is the fence. So in this particular case, we are able to change it. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo les quedó? Ahora, no pasa muy seguido, pero sí tienen que poner un poquito de... Uh, keep an eye out on what the word is that's being used. Porque si es un adverb, sí se puede ocupar el gerund, especialmente cuando tenemos un object like the fence that can be used. So, let's try to see if we can practice that from a live worksheet. A ver, aquí está, a ver. All right, so, a ver si lo pueden. Can you guys see that okay? Solo vamos a hacer la primera, la primera filita. Okay. What do we need to use is the question. You have to complete the sentence. And you can either choose a gerund or an infinitive 
to be able to complete it. I need you guys to read the sentence and look at what options we have. It's either the gerund, which is the ing, or the infinitive, which is to. A ver. Démosle con el primero. Take a few seconds to read. Yeah. The After gerund. Washing. After watching the film, I met my grandma. En este caso vamos a ocupar el gerund, que yeah. es watching. Is that yes. correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Vamos con el siguiente. My sister. Y las opciones son helping to help. and to help. Help me. To help. Oh, I help. My sister refused help me with to help. Project. Y este sería el? Infinitive. 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 Correcto. El to. ¿verdad? El infinitive. All right. Vamos con la next one. We need to buy. We need buying or we need to buy? To buy. To buy. To buy. To buy. To buy. To buy. A new closer. Okay. We love playing. To play. To play to with play. our dad. We love to play with our dad. Oh, this one's close. We love playing with our dad. We love to play with our dad. To play. To play. A ver, a ver, I, I hear a lot to play. Vamos a poner to play, but I'm feeling very, mm, I don't know, iffy. A ver, a ver. The accused failed um, teacher. in court. See? So Here. if the sentence is describing an action, we need to use the ing, right? You know, you can look at it that way. Okay. So ahora solo solo tiene que tener cuidado porque it's not always the case. But but you can you can say for the majority of the cases that's the way it seems. If somebody's doing something then it's an ing. Solo que ojo, ¿verdad? Ojo, ojo porque no en todos los casos funciona de la misma manera. Y creo que en el anterior era playing. Yeah, me too. We love playing In. with our dad. You know, I was feeling. Uh, do you guys want to change it? Yes. Yes. You guys want to change it? Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. So the accused. <laughs> ¿Qué le pasó a the accused? To appear. The accused yeah. failed to appear. All right. Let's leave this first line. Le vamos a dar para ver cómo salimos. Hubo ahí un pequeño cambio. E, e, oh, we did, we got it right. Well done, everybody. Well done. All right. Para el día de mañana, miren lo que nos queda. Por favor, por, para el día de mañana, I'm sorry. Para el lunes. Monday. Hi, teacher. <laughs> For Monday, we have all of these that we have to complete, and hopefully we can complete them. Solo que vamos a cambiar un poco, y ustedes me van a ayudar a leer un poquito de esto, ¿ok? All right, all right. Mm -hmm. that way, yeah. Okay. That way we get a little bit of practice. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, ya que es, es nuestro Friday, um, les tengo para el lunes, les tengo syllables otra vez. Eh, un, unos ejercicios to reinforce the syllable stress. Y creo que les tengo también unos ejercicios en esa porción. I, I believe that's pretty much it. And I have some other stuff that I have to practice with you guys. But we should be okay. Uh, in la sección número dos, everybody. All right. So, I, let me see here. If you guys have any questions, I don't know if you guys recorded or uh, if you guys were able to grab my phone number from yesterday. I said, I asked, we had a, we had a little meeting and I asked about the groups. And they told me that they were going to create groups and they were going to be sending them out, but I still haven't received any group from WhatsApp. Do you guys have any groups in WhatsApp? De parte de, de parte de nosotros? O sea, de parte de Insafor? No, perdón, de, de parte de Inglés Corporativo? No, todavía no. 
I already have a group, but let me see. But there's, did they include the teacher? They didn't include the teacher? Qué <gasps> malvado. Oh, teacher. <laughs> no estoy, ¿verdad? No. Oh, my God. Yo goodness. pensé que ustedes estaban. Ajá. No. Me mandaron no. a hacer un rato. <laughs> Did, really? Oh yeah. my God. Well, let me let me give you guys. Can you guys please? Can you guys please add me to the group? Yes. Hold um, on. Let me let me. Pero no somos administradores, teacher. Oh, so you guys cannot have. Do you guys know who sent the original WhatsApp? Mm, yeah, I have contact. You do? Yeah. Is it, was it, was it Miss mm. Elena? No, Jason Bautista. Jason sent it? Okay. Oh, I have Jason. <laughs> I'll, you know what? I'll ask him to, I'll ask him and I'll tell him to join, to, to, to get me, to send me the WhatsApp. No, sorry, sure. Oh my goodness. All right. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys on Monday, okay? Good night. Thank you. Good night, good night everybody. Teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.